Hey there guys, welcome to the video. My name is Pushpinder Gill and in this video we're going to be talking about the exponentials and logarithmic functions. Now before we get started guys, this would be our website address that is perfect-course.com. Don't forget to explore this. This would be our Facebook page to give us your valuable like and follow us on other social media platforms. And this would be our email address to give us your valuable feedback. So let's go ahead and get started guys. So before you get uh, familiar with the logarithms, you actually need to get familiar with a, a function. The function is of the form of y is equal to a to the power x such that a is a positive number. Right. So this is actually a function. Now what we need to do is we actually need to know the shape of this graph, you know, shape of its graph. So let's suppose we have the value of x and we have the value of y. If x is negative 3, then y is simply, let's suppose, if I, if I just take, a, take an example, let's suppose y is equal to 2 to the power x. Let's pick up y is equal to 2 to the power x. If x is negative 3, then y is 1 by 8. And if x is negative 2, then y is uh, 1 by 4. If x is negative 1, then y is simply 1 by 2. If x is 0, y is 1. If x is 1, y is 2. If x is 2, then y is 4. Because 2 to the power 2 is 4. And if x is 3, then 2 to the power 3, y is 8. Now if I talk about the function of this graph, this graph is going to look like this. So this is going to be the x-axis, this is going to be the y-axis. Now if I talk about this, this function of this graph, it's actually going to come something like this. And it's going to go forward, right? This point over here would actually be 1 because when x is 0, then y is 1. When x is 0, then y is 1. And as you can see that as x decreases, as the value of x decreases, uh, the as the value of de x decreases, y will keep on decreasing, keep on decreasing. However, y will never touch zero, right? So y will never touch zero. That means there will never be a value of this function such that y will be equal to zero. That will never ever happen. Which means I can say that uh, this x-axis, I can say that this x-axis is the asymptote of this function. So what do you mean by asymptote of this function? Uh, asymptote means that is the value at which that is the line at which this function will never be defined. So this is the line at which the function will never ever be defined because y is never going to touch the line is never going to touch the x-axis because y will never be zero. Right. So if you talk about some other shapes, let's suppose this is y is equal to 2 to the power x. y is equal to 2 to the power x uh, looks uh, something like this. So, you know, let me just uh, draw the graph here like this. So, y is equal to 2 to the power x looks something like this. So, this is y is equal to 2 to the power x. Now, how will y is equal to 3 to the power x look like? So, if I want to talk about y is equal to 3 to the power x, then 3 to the power x will actually come at a smaller pace, a lower pace here, and it's going to meet the graph at this point. And after this point is going to go up. Now why is that happening? Now if you just plot some values for 3 to the power x, you know that when x is negative, then 2 to the power x, when x is negative, then 2 to the power x is greater than 3 to the power x because uh, 2 to the power minus 1 is greater than 3 to the power minus 1. And at this point, when x is 0, then even 2 to the power 0 will be 1 and 3 to the power 0 will be 1. That means at this point both the functions will actually meet. So what will happen? At this point both the functions will actually meet. And in fact, whichever function you pick up, let's suppose I pick up this function, that is y is equal to 1.5 raised to the power x. Right? So how will 1.5 raised to the power x be like? It will actually be greater here and as soon as it reaches this point, now all the functions are going to meet here, is actually be lower here. So this is going to be y is equal to 1.5 raised to the power x. Because 1.5 raised to the power a negative number is greater than 2 raised to the power a negative number and 3 raised to the power a negative number. And when it comes to positive sides, it's actually on the lower end. And all the functions of this form y is equal to a to the power x are actually going to pass through this point which is 0, 1. Why? Because if you have y is equal to a to the power x, 
if x is 0, then y will be 1 because 1 is equal to a to the power 0. Anything raised to the power 0 is actually equal to 1. Right? So that means all the graphs are actually going to follow this point, even though whatever the function is, all the y is equal to a to the power x type functions are going to be following this line. Right? Now let's go ahead and define the logarithmic function. Now, I actually started with this function that uh, y is equal to a to the power x. Right? Now you can actually transform this function into a logarithmic function. You can actually say that a log of base a, right, so log to the base a of y is actually equal to x. So this is how this function is actually transformed into this logarithmic function. Now, uh, there are going to be certain properties of this. So before we hit the properties, uh, I'm actually going to take some examples. Let's suppose 2 to the power 5 is 32. That means we will have log of 32 to the base 2 is actually equal to 5. Fine. So this is how I have transformed this into a logarithmic function. Fine. So as you learn more about logarithms, this is going to sound much, much easier. So if you're actually hearing it for the first time, just try to understand that this goes here. The, this comes as the base and whatever is the power stays here. So let's suppose if I want to talk about 3 to the power 4 is 81. I want to convert this into logarithms. Then it's going to be log of 81 to the base 3 is actually equal to 4. Fine. So this is what logarithm is. Now, let's talk about some other thing. You know, some important properties of uh, logarithms. Now, before we talk that, uh, this a over here, this a over here is actually known as the base, right? So a over here is actually known as uh, the base, and uh, and we say that if I let's suppose I talk about this example, uh, we say that that the logarithm of 32 to the base 2 is 5. That is how we say it. We say the logarithm of 32 to the base 2 is actually equal to 5. Similarly over here we'll say the logarithm of 81 to the base 3 is actually equal to 4. Now there are certain properties that you actually need to know. The first property is uh, that let's suppose if I talk about anything raised to the power 0 is actually 1, isn't it? Anything raised to power 0 is 1. If you convert that to logarithms, you will have log of 1 to any base will always be 0. So that's actually the first property of logarithms. That log of 1 to any base is actually equal to 0. Because you know that all the exponential functions pass through this point. So that means at this point, uh, the value of log is actually going to be 0. So log of 0 to log of 1 to any base is actually equal to 0. And similarly, you know that anything raised to the power 1 is the same thing. Based on this, you can actually say that log of a to the base a is always 1. So log of a to the base a is always equal to 1. Let's say for example, log of 5 to the base 5 is always 1. Log of 10 to the base 10 is 1. Log of 15 to the base 15 is 1. So that means log of base to the base to the same base is actually 1. Similarly, you can say that 2 to the power 1 is 2. So all this this function, this is going to be uh, the x value is actually, so you have the function like y is equal to a to the power x, right? So if you substitute x to be equal to 2, x to be equal to 1, you'll actually get the value of y to be equal to a. So the same stuff is happening here, right? So your value of x is actually equal to 1. So log of base to, log of a to the base a is actually going to be equal to 1. Fine. So I suppose everyone is understanding this here, right? So let's say someone asks you that uh, 10 to the power x is actually equal to 500. Now you need to find the value of x. So that means from here you can actually convert this into logarithms. You can say log of 500 
to the base 10 is actually equal to x. So you can actually substitute that in the calculator or use the log tables. You'll have the value of x to be equal to 2.7. Fine. So that's one way of going about it. Now let's understand few of the logarithm properties so that your life actually becomes easy. You don't have to do this all the time, right? So let's understand few of the logarithmic properties. So in the next video, we'll be talking about the logarithmic properties. So what I'll do is I'll just summarize what we have done till now. So summarizing what we have done, if I say that y is equal to a to the power x, right? So that means the value of log of a to the base y is actually equal to x. For example, 2 to the power 5 is 32. That means log of uh, log of 32 to the base 2 is actually equal to 5. Another thing that we learned right now is that log of uh, another thing that we actually learned that log of a of 1 is actually equal to 0 such that a is positive. Another thing that we learned is that log of a to the base a is actually equal to 1. Now one more thing is that if you take log of fractions, so let's suppose log of a of let's say 0 0.5, right, that will actually be equal to a negative number. Why? Because log of a of 1 is actually 0, right? So after 1, the logarithms will actually turn out to be negative numbers, right? So this is something that we, we're going to be doing more about this in the future videos. But I hope that you're understanding that if log of 1 is 0, then log of fractions, when I say fractions, log of any number between 1 and 0 is actually going to be a negative number. As you can see that the, the value of the function of log is x and if you talk about this function here, whenever you get fractions, so over here you get fractions, isn't it? So all the fractions actually come out only in, only on the left hand side of the x axis where x is negative. So the logarithm of fractions is always going to be negative. So when I say fractions, I mean value between 0 and 1. That is what I, that is what I mean, right? So, I suppose you're understanding this point over here, guys. Uh, this would be our uh, website address, that is perfect-score.com. Don't forget to explore that. This would be our Facebook page to give us your valuable like. And this would be our email address to give us your valuable feedback. So, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one.